he go to his home, his flat in Brentwood in Essex that he shares with his girlfriend Anita to sample the quiet life of this young Scot. Yeah, well, I came down and nobody knew I sort of crept into London sort of thing. Uh, nobody knew who I was and I think that made it a bit more easier for me. Uh, took a bit of pressure off me. And then when I started scoring goals, everybody was saying, who, who is he, you know, so... I'm enjoying that. Mm. Now you had a bit of a reputation up in Scotland for enjoying a night out. How did that yeah. come about? I mean, I was in the manager's office every week. Somebody was phoning in saying I was here, I was there. I mean, you got a phone call that was out one Friday night. Um, I sat up in disco. I mean, I was staying in my mother's, you know, so... Some people or person, whoever it was, sort of stirred a few stories out about us. Which, I'd never found out who it was, but... I'd like to, you know. Tell us about the friendship with George Bess. Yeah, I know George quite well. Uh, he's gave me a lot of advice. And I think if I'm in my... I've got the same business manager, and I think if they found me... I yeah, won't take too much drink of that. I think it'd break my legs, you know, but... <laughs> George is a good lad. But you're a, you're a young man, you've got an attractive girlfriend. Surely the places like Stringfellows or what have you, it must attract you a little bit. No, I'm down here, uh, it's a job and I'm, I'm down here and I tend to do it well. Um, and if it means giving up going to the discos in London, things like that, then I'll do it. Do you think there'll be a stage when you might be able to relax and do more of that? Yeah, the close season. Nice gentlemen, very neat turn. And the header from Frank McAvery. With goals like these, with St Mirren in the Scottish Premier Division, earned Frank his goal-scoring reputation. It was only four years ago, though, that he was out of football, working his way through a string of jobs. From everything from van boy to... I was a mechanic, I was a paint and decorator. I mean, I've done everything. You didn't last very long in any of them, by the sign of them. No, I did not. It ranged from about 20 minutes to a couple of months, you know. Uh, I get i barred off unemployment more times for starting work and then quitting, you know. But football was the fullest thing for my mind. Mm. I just didn't think I was good enough. And How did you think you were going to end up then? I thought I was just going to end up with um, one of the millions that's unemployed sort of thing. I thought it was in a dead end. Did you have a schoolboy dream of perhaps playing in, in English? Yeah, football? obviously I had a, a dream. I mean, everybody dreams of playing it. Hamden and Wembley and things like that, but uh, it was never, I never thought it would become a reality. And last week when I stepped out Hamden, it was mm. sort of a, a dream coming through, you know. And people were comparing you with Dennis Hill after that, the yeah. same part in the Yeah, well, um, what can you say about Dennis? You're a tremendous goal scorer, right? Yeah. Uh, in fact, people compare me with that, and it's a great compliment to me. You say you don't set targets for yourself, Frank, but somewhere in your mind you might have an idea of where you're going to be in perhaps a year or so's time? Uh, no, everything's going so well for me at the moment. Uh, I, uh, I see I'm really enjoying it. And I'm not setting myself any targets. Just, if it keeps going the way it's going, I'll be happy. Our reporter there, Mark. Tam's Frank McAvenny. It follows two goals in two games. His first after coming on a sub at Oldham last Saturday. His latest in the Zenith victory over Cambridge. Upton Park was getting ready for the big Mac attack. For striker Frank McAvenny, his first full match in six months, since April Fool's Day in fact. And West Ham boss Billy Bonds had told him, do your talking on the pitch. But it was Cambridge United who were first to threaten. Lujek Niklosko with a poor clearance and Dion Dublin just wide with this effort. Stung into action, West Ham hit back in style, a wonder goal from George Paris. And 1-0 is how it stayed until half-time. Five minutes after the break, Lee Philpott's corner, Dublin's flick-on for Gary Rowett. And a goal for the 17-year-old to hold Cambridge level. McAvenny's first whiff of the chance, quick thinking like Dublin, but this also failed to pay off. Then Mike Small wriggled through, but McAvenny's turn and snapshot was superbly saved. 
And it was looking like a frustrating evening for the Scotsman. McAvenny down, but definitely not out. Now, two against one never is fair, and Tim Breaker found that out the hard way. But straight from Ian Bishop's free kick, West Ham scored. Small to McAvenny, and that's what the Scotsman does best. Two goals in two games since his return, and when Chris Hewton joined the attack, McAvenny almost scored again with a diving header. But in the scramble, more miracles from keeper John Sheffield. At the other end, another marvellous save, Dublin foiled by Mikloshko. Just before full time, some more wizardry from Paris, and what a goal this might have been. So, 2-1 it stayed, but would the outspoken match winner now earn a regular run in the side? Yeah, well that's the best sort of talking Frank can do, you know, um, uh, to keep putting the ball in the back of the net. Uh, Small is setting up for one, uh, I think, you know, it be one of his easier ones, but... You know, it's two and two, so I'm delighted. I don't think I've got a point to prove to the supporters anyway. Um, probably got one to prove to the management here. Uh, I don't know what I've done, but he's put me back in and uh, hopefully I can stand there. Does he have a point to prove, do you think, here at Upton Park? With the crowd or with me? Or? With you? No, not at all. No, no, none at all. I know what Frank can do. Um, he's just got to keep doing it. Well, it seems that he's, uh, he really is doing his talking on the pitch, Frank McAvenny. Yeah, it's good to see him back. I mean, for he's been out of the team, well, obviously, at the start with a bad injury, and then for one reason or another, he's been in the reserves for quite some time. But Frank, Maga and Frank McAvenny, at whatever club he's been with, has scored a lot of goals, and it looks as if he might start to form a dangerous partnership with Big Small. It'd be good to see as a West Ham fan, I don't know if you spotted that. But were you surprised that when he had the choice of going to Arsenal, who were then going to be champions, or back to West Ham, that he chose West Ham? Well, a career move, you'd have thought um, they would have chose Arsenal at the time, but of course, um, Frank McAvenny has been at Upton Park before, and, it, and it's got a tremendous pull, that club, for, um, for ex-players, you know, they seem to have a tremendous affection for the club, um, ex-West Ham players, and I think that's what swayed Frank in the end. You're saying all the right things there, Gordon, thanks very much. A short <laughs> break coming up. And